What to include in a proposal? Steve Hansen here, co-founder of the janitorialstore.com and myhousecleanbiz.com. Well, for those of us that do commercial cleaning, you know, often you got to present a proposal to your to your prospect. And, you know, sometimes you're going to be wondering, well, what should I include in that proposal? Well, I'll tell you the common things that you should have in your proposal, uh, in any proposal, should be you should have a cover letter, you should have a scope of work, and then you should have a service agreement, uh, testimonials, and, and uh, uh, references. So those, those are the least that you should have in a proposal. So generally when we're thinking about what we're going to put in a proposal, it's generally going to be, be, uh, be based off of the RFP. In some cases, the, the request for a proposal will tell you exactly what they're looking for in, in, their, in the proposal. And uh, for example, maybe they're going to ask you for an executive summary. So that means you have to include an executive summary into your proposal. So that's pretty straightforward. But what about some of these other uh, accounts that you're doing? Uh, let's, th let's say we got a 5,000 square foot account. Well, for that size of an account, uh, it'd probably be pretty straightforward to where we just need our basic, uh, you know, our basic things uh, included in the proposal. Uh, then, uh, you know, maybe a 30, 50,000 square foot uh, facility uh, could be the same, and maybe we're going to add some additional pages to it. You know, maybe we're going to put in an organizational chart. Uh, maybe we're going to put in a work plan. Uh, again, uh, when you're talking to your prospect, uh, you want to really ask a lot of good questions and uncover exactly what it is that they're looking for. Generally, the larger the account, the more uh, that you need to include in your proposal, uh, such as, you know, like I say, the executive summary, you'll, you know, an uh, organizational chart for sure, you know, a proposal summary. Uh, you may have to uh, attach a technical uh, plan. Uh, you may even have to do an environment, uh, environment, environmental management plan. Um, and, of course, you know, a work plan. But those are some of the things that you're going to have to put in there. Now again, it's going to depend on the size of the account and type of account, but you know these are all the things that you got to keep in mind. Uh, the great thing is is that uh, if you're a member of the janitorial store, you can go into the download library and go to the bidding and estimating uh, category, and you're able to download uh, proposals that will have these uh, these things included in it. So that's a great thing about being a member. But anyway, whenever you're doing a proposal. Uh, always make sure that you know what you're going to put in the proposal. Um, and for those that are doing residential, generally you, you don't do a, you're not doing a proposal for residential. Uh, homeowners aren't interested in a proposal. Uh, in fact, in some cases, it's even hard to get them to sign an agreement for service. But uh, anyway, there, there's ways uh, to work around that too. But sometimes when you're doing, let's say, a, a large commercial apartment complex where you're doing move-in, move-outs, turnovers, that, that type of thing, or even the common areas, well, then you may think about having a proposal uh, done to where uh, you're, you're going to present exactly what it is that you're offering to the prospect under whatever terms it may be. And uh, so you can get them to sign, uh, you know, sign the service agreement, and uh, either you're going to do it for... You know, it's an evergreen agreement or maybe it's a contract for one year or two years or whatever it may be. But in some cases, it's just not a bad idea to do that. Uh, I always say whenever possible, always get some type of a service agreement signed, no matter if it's commercial or residential. And, you know, there's, there's reasons for that. Obviously, if you decide to exit your business at some point, you decide to sell. The, the owner or the buyer, excuse me, would want to see some type of agreements in place. So that's why, uh, that's one of the benefits of, of doing proposals and or some type of a service agreement with your, with your clients. So anyway, um, you know, basically it's going to come down to the size of the, of the prospect or the size of the account that you're doing the proposal for. Uh, based off of that, uh, then you're going to include or exclude uh, certain items in your proposal. Uh, we have proposals that are as little as three page proposals and we have uh, others that are you know, 15, 25 pages or, or more, uh, once you start developing all these executive summaries and other things like that there, they get pretty extensive. In fact, uh, they could end up being to where you're using three ring binders and you may have multiple binders full of uh, information uh, in your proposal. So anyway, uh, keep that all in mind. And, uh, you know, generally, 
you know, if you put together a well-written and real, well-done proposal, that really impresses the prospects. So keep that in mind. So that's all I got for you today. So uh, until next time, uh, you know, we'll see you. And uh, again, if you uh, like the information that we've got here, go ahead and click on the like and share button. And if you haven't subscribed to our YouTube channel, go ahead and do so. See ya.